What is going on guys, The Real KJ3 here and allow me to introduce my Compaq SR5000 AMD Ryzen Sleeper computer. I originally had planned to build this back in February of 2019 but I never really did anything with it but now it's time for some upgrades. What I plan to do is show you around the computer, what it's made of and then do a CPU upgrade and test it out, run a few benchmarks and see how good she runs. First things first, what I have done for case modding is added two USB 3.0 slots compared to the USB 1.0 slots that the computer originally had. On the back you have a top mounted PSU and for the IO you have keyboard, mouse, DVI, VGA, HDMI, four USB 3.0, two USB 2.0, and Ethernet. I also added in a separate video card and Wi-Fi card. As you can see on the inside here, you can see the Wi-Fi card, the GT730 graphics card, a 256GB M.2 SSD, 8 gigs of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 RAM, and an AMD Athlon 200GE 2.4 dual core processor. I also have an all-white LED strip along the bottom of the case. So here's the main focus. I want to change out the 2.4 Athlon to a Ryzen 3 3.6 quad core processor. Time to head over to my local Best Buy. Enjoy the short little ride time lapse. minutes later. Alrighty, it is party time with the Ryzen 3. Let's get to installation. First, I gotta take out this old processor. Okay, maybe a little better than that. Alrighty, installation went fairly easy, it's time to flick on the PSU and give it its first boot. Let's see what we get. Alrighty, good sign there. But I don't seem to be getting anything from the screen. Maybe it's a graphics card? Hmm, looks like I'm gonna have to diagnose this one. All right, what I'm gonna try first, I'm gonna try taking out the graphics card that is inside of it right now and then try to use the dedicated one just to see if there's any kind of conflict with the new processor and maybe some incompatible hardware. I got the same result this time, but from reading a couple forums online, it looks like it's gonna need a BIOS update. So, after spending so much time trying to figure out how to get into the BIOS flashing menu, through the BIOS, because I'm so used to working on Asus machines, I found out all I have to do is press a different key, that's the N key, to go into QFlash. And so now, it's time to update the BIOS. Maybe it was just me, or maybe I was being impatient, but Gigabyte did not make it necessarily easy to find a image for the BIOS. 
or anything for the motherboard that I had. I found that out real quick. Two hours later. After many, many, many attempts of trying to find the right BIOS image on what I thought was the right motherboard, I eventually downloaded the right image for the right motherboard that I thought I had. And after that, it said it had updated successfully and I got this screen once again. Back to square one. After spending a couple minutes trying to find out what was going on, the computer just magically rebooted and started working correctly with the new BIOS update. I still had it on integrated graphics at this time, but Windows was like, whoa, what's going on, dude? But thankfully, everything started to work once more. Now all I had to do was put the Ryzen back into the machine and see what I get. The Ryzen's in, let's power it on and I still get the no input signal. For the third time, back to square one. As just as I stop recording, the computer starts up normally and boots right into Windows. And as we can see here, it has detected the Ryzen, but the day was coming to an end and I decided to hold the testing until tomorrow. Tomorrow. So one thing I forgot to record was I took two SATA DVD drives and painted them a heirloom white to match the scheme of my sleeper and to be functional. The bottom one is actually broken, but I plan to hollow it out so it's just the shell of the drive and use it to hide wires. So all I had to do for the DVD drive was just plug it in via SATA and into the power supply and it was ready to go. Alrighty, let's close her up and get that side panel back on and start to plug things in so we can get benchmarking. So first things first, I want to try out Super Hot again and see compared to the Athlon that I had in the other video with the GT730 if I got any better results, or maybe even worse, who knows. But in this, I actually got the same result, which was a little surprising to me. When things got slow motion, it was still averaging about 30 frames a second, but when things got real time, it stayed about the same. As you can see here, we still have the same results as we did on the Athlon. So, I'm ruling this one an in-game thing. So, now let's try out Counter-Strike Go. I know that I set it to medium settings beforehand, so I'm going to go back into the settings and change them back to high and see what we get. This time, on high settings, I got a much more better looking gameplay along with a much smoother frame rate of about 50 to 55, even up to 60 FPS, even when things were pretty active on screen. Another game I tested out was Portal 2 on high settings and as expected, stayed at a steady 60 frames a second during the entire gameplay. Another one I tested out was Wolfenstein The New Order. It isn't necessarily a new game, but it still is graphically demanding. On high settings, I got about 27 to 30 frames a second, averaging at about 28. But once I turned things down to about medium settings, it got up to about 50, 60 frames a second. So this was one of those games that was either going to be runnable, most better experience on medium or low settings. This time I decided to pull out the big guns and I went for the fire strike test and as you can see that was not happening whatsoever. I ended up canceling this test because it was about maybe 5 to 10 frames a second at the absolute most. As you can see that wasn't happening. So I decided to open up the skydiver test and I got much better results there with my average result coming out to about 5300. Well, that'll wrap up this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed or learned a thing or two. I will definitely be doing more upgrades to this sleeper in the future and will be doing videos on those. But in the meantime, leave a like, feel free to subscribe or comment or do whatever your little heart desires. But for now, we will catch you on the flip side. Peace out.